Hi everyone, welcome back to the another video of Yes Academy. So guys, in our previous video, we have learned about the PSLV that is something about the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle that is developed and managed by ISRO. We have studied the different stages that is the four stages in the PSLV alongside with the three variants of the PSLV. The main function of the PSLV is to launch the satellites into the sun's synchronous polar orbit of the Earth the, uh, and it will be having the payload capacity of 1.7 tons. So guys, now over here in this particular video, we are going to learn about the GSLV that is nothing but the bigger brother of the PSLV. The GSLV stands for the Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle. It is nothing but the fourth generation launch vehicle uh, systems in India that is managed and developed by ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization. Well guys, when we compare this PSLV and GSLV, GSLV is the bigger brother because it is having the maximum payload capacity. It can... Uh, you know, uh, transfer the satellites into the polar orbits that is the of 5000 kg capacity, the payload capacity for the polar orbit is the 5000 kg whereas uh, the, the it can place the satellites in the, into the GTO that is the geosynchronous transfer orbit or the capacity of around 2.5 tons 2500 kg. So it is having a different payload capacity with their different orbits. So guys, over here in this today's video, we are going to learn about the what is nothing but the GSLV, its main function of the GSLV, the different stages, that is the three stages of the GSLV alongside with the three variants of the GSLV. So guys, if you are new over here on my educational channel, Engineers Academy, kindly subscribe it and please press the bell icon. Because whenever I upload a new educational informative video, you will get instant notification. So without wasting any time, let's begin with our today's topic of GSLV. So guys, this is nothing but the GSLV. This particular GSLV uses the three stages to reach at the desired altitude and it transfers the uh, satellites and the other space objects into the uh, elliptical orbit of the Earth that is nothing but the geostationary transfer orbit or else geosynchronous Earth orbit that is GTO or GEO. So the main function of the GSLV is to carry the space objects, is to carry the satellites and place them into the desired orbit, into the desired trajectory. So when we look at the specifications of the GSLV, it has having it has having the height of 49 meters, the diameter varies 2.8 meter. Also, the lift of mass is around 414.75 tons and it is having the number of stages that is the three stages it also has the four liquid propellant strap-on boosters that is generally uh, operated by the vikas engine that is the liquid propellant strap-on boosters the three stages are like at the beginning the first stage is the solid stage then the liquid stage and the in the last stage that is nothing but the it uses the cryogenic engine so now let's see, check out what are those stages. So starting with the bottom as over here in GSLV, there are four liquid strap-on boosters of Vikas engine that uses the fuel of UDMH plus N2O4. The UDMH stands for unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrogen, whereas the N2O4 stands for dinitrogen tetraoxide. Well guys, over here, in this particular four liquid strap-on boosters, there are four different Vikas engines that is uh, like fixed into those boosters that produces the thrust of 680 to 760 kN. Well, this thrust is very much less as compared to the uh, previous PSLV and at this particular thrust, uh, the spacecraft cannot take a lift. So this is the reason after the ignition of this four liquid strap-on boosters, after the six seconds of the ignition of the strap-on boosters, the first stage gets ignited. That is the solid stage in GSLV. The burn time for this liquid boosters is around 150 seconds. So moving ahead, next is nothing but the first stage of the GSLV. So this first stage is known as the GS1 as in the previous case of uh, PSLV that was the PS1. It uses the HTPV solid propellant with a burn time of 100 seconds and this particular stage 1 gets ignited after the 4 to 5 seconds or that is the ignition of the strap-on liquid boosters. This particular HTPV is nothing but the solid propellant that is of the hydroxyl terminated polybutadiene. 
which produces the maximum thrust of 4700 kN also over here in the stage 1 it uses the engine that is the S139 engine and over here the 139 tons of the HTPB which is placed inside the stage 1 of this GSLB over here in the stage 1 the burn time is around 100 seconds while the strap on boosters continues to burn for the remaining 45 seconds and they continue to provide the required thrust to GSLB so guys moving ahead to the next stage that is nothing but the stage 2 that is the GS2 so over here in this particular stage that is the liquid engine is used that is of vikas engine is used the fuel that is nothing but the udmh plus n2o4 that is all cementical dimethyl hydrogen plus dinitrogen tetraoxide it is used it produces the maximum thrust of 800 kN and the burn time is around 150 seconds so moving ahead to the next stage that is nothing but the third stage this is called as the gs3 this third stage uses the cryogenic engine that is nothing but the ce7.5 india's first cryogenic engine that is developed by the liquid propulsion systems center this particular cryogenic engine is known as the cusp cryogenic upper stage project the main fuel that is used over here that is nothing but the lox plus lh2 it produces the maximum thrust of 75 kN so guys over here these are nothing but the three stages of the gslv these are required to reach that particular uh, launch vehicle to the gto geo synchronous transfer orbit of the earth at that is at the 35000 km away so to reach at that higher altitude these three stages are required the main function of this gslv is to transfer the satellites into the gto the types of the satellites which is used the types of the satellites are nothing but the mainly that is the communication type of the satellites mainly the tv broadcasting satellites the some of the weather satellites and some of the intelligent uh, intelligence military and the intelligence satellites these are used in this particular gto orbit over here guys the gslv is having the three variants that is the mark 1 mark 2 and the mark 3 The Mark One is having the payload capacity to the low Earth orbit of around 2.5 tons, while it can place into the GTO around 1.5 tons payload capacity. While in the Mark Two, the payload capacity in the low Earth orbit that is of the 5 tons, whereas it can place the satellites into the GTO of 2.7 tons. In the third scenario, that is the in the third case of the Mark Three, it can place about 10 tons weight. of the satellites into the leo low earth orbit and around 5 tons of the satellites into the gto so this is the different variants this can be we can segregate them as per their payload capacities also we have the mark 1 that is propelled by the old russian engine that is the kvd1 type of the engine it uses the hydrogen that is the lh2 and liquid oxygen that is lox in the mark 2 we have used the indian engine that is the first indian cryogenic engine that is nothing but the cusp cryogenic upper stage project that is developed by the liquid propulsion system center in india and in the mark 3 variant of this gslv it uses the ce20 type of the engine also guys over here at the top there is a multi payload adapter the main function of the multi payload adapter is to shoots all the satellites into their desired trajectory during the orbiting phase which is very similar to that of the PSLV so guys that is all about the GSLV i hope you like my video if you having any doubts any queries please leave a comment and guys please do subscribe to my educational channel engineers academy so guys thank you so much for watching this educational video please stay tuned with engineers academy